Well, hello there and welcome to Park Congregational United Church of Christ, this open and affirming congregation in downtown Grand Rapids, Michigan. I am so pleased that you have joined us on this beautiful day that our Lord God has made on this third Sunday of Advent as we lean into the theme of joy and rejoicing in the beautiful blessings and gifts that our loving God has bestowed upon us. And so as we gather this day, my friends, it is my hope that no matter who you are or where you come from or wherever you are in your journey through life and whenever, however, wherever you may be accessing this worship service, that you know that you are loved steadfastly by God and that you are so welcomed here at Park Church. On this third Sunday of Advent, uh, we rejoice in many of the contributions and gifts and efforts of people of our congregation and our community to give back to our city and our county and in our world. Um, one of the ways in which we are doing that is through the Christmas offering. And at the tail end of our worship service today, there will be a QR code. And if you are able to support the good work that the United Church Outreach Ministry is doing here in the greater Grand Rapids area to help those families and people who are living on the margins, uh, we would invite you to do so. Uh, it is a wonderful way for your gift to be transformed into the answer to someone's prayer. Uh, but there's also so many things going on in the life of our church. And so please take a moment and read through the Congregationalist newsletter so that you can see the ways that you can stay connected and get involved and, and be informed about the ways that we are living out our mission of God's love, peace, joy, and hope here in the greater Grand Rapids world, uh, community. But here on this third Sunday of Advent, my friends, I want you to think about how it is that you are finding joy in your life this day. What are you grateful for? What are, what are the areas, the people, the, the things uh, that bring joy to you? And remember that, that joy and happiness are not always the same thing. Joy is a state of being, leaning on God's grace and trusting in God's love. Um, happiness sometimes is fleeting, but joy is steadfast. And so as we hear our story and we give thanks to God for the beauties and blessings of our lives, let us do so with a joyful heart this day as we begin our worship formally at this time. My friends, we begin this third Sunday of Advent and our worship of God by going to God in a word of prayer. Again, I would encourage you to think about where it is that you are finding joy this day. What has brought you joy this week and what are you grateful for this morning? I know many of us during this time of year uh, can be feeling somewhat blue. Um, that through loss of loved ones, loss of income or employment, uh, through the stresses of this time of year, whether they be on our finances or on our time, can really struggle. Uh, not even to mention those who may be living on the streets and are unhoused or those who find themselves in war-torn areas of our world like Israel and Gaza, Ukraine, and such. So I would invite you to please hold them in your heart and in your prayers as we go to God now, as we begin our worship by turning to God and lifting our prayers. God of Mary, Mother of Jesus, and all of the lowly who seek to be lifted, God of Isaiah, who felt the Spirit call upon him to bring good news. We ask that your Spirit would fall upon us in this hour of worship. For this time of year, O oh God, we often get caught up in what we do not have. The material things we lack, the, the access and the privilege we may lack, and the answers even that seem to escape us in crucial moments. Forgive us, O oh God, for the times we forget to remember you. And hold us accountable for the moments we fail to see you. The blessings of our age are past. And help us to reconnect our joy and our gratitude to your spirit. Remind us to name our joys, our miracles, our deliverances, our redemptions. One by one. For you are there in them all. Oh God, as we seek you more deeply in this time of worship. We ask that you would bind up the broken hearted and that you would bring liberation to those who are living in violence and war, and that you would bring peace within, and that you would bring peace among us. This we pray, 
along with prayers for healing and wholeness for all who are ailing of body, mind, and spirit, that you would be with us in this time. We bring them in the name of your son, Christ Jesus, the babe of Bethlehem, who grew up teaching us to bring everything to you in prayer when he taught us these ancient and sacred words to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. good morning. It's so good to see you. Thank you so much for being here today. As you can see at our candle set, we have lit two candles so far, the candle of hope and the candle of peace. And today we get to light what is my personal favorite of the candles uh, uh, during the Advent candle season. We get to light the pink candle, which helps us lean into the idea of joy and, and happiness and, uh, and, and finding that place in our lives where we can say thank you and be grateful for the many gifts that God has given to us. And as we have done over the last few weeks, one of you is going to help us lean into this season and, and lift up the theme of joy. And so I want to invite Rachel and Theo to come down at the moment and to light our candle for us. Uh, good people of Park Church, you are invited to turn to page two of your bulletin and to follow along and to lift up the bolded words when it comes to that part of the service. And then our carol choir is going to sing through our Advent theme song once and you are invited to sing it through with them the second time. But now, Rachel and Theo, if you would lead us in the lighting of our candle. The things we get for Christmas will not last as long as the things we get from Christmas. We will finish our Christmas treats, get bored with our Christmas toys, and go out of our Christmas clothes. But the things we get from God this Christmas, hope, peace, joy, love, will go with us all our life. Why do we light the Advent candles? The first Advent candle was for hope, for God promises to be with us, Emmanuel, and that gives us hope. The second Advent candle was for peace, the peace God gives us for, and the peace we are to share with others. The third advent, the third candle is the candle of joy. The miracle of Christmas is that even though there is so much woe in the world, hope in God and the peace of Christ deep within us can help us find joy even when we are sad, hurting, or lonely. Like Mary and Elizabeth, we can be bearers of joy and help others feel joy in hard times too.
Our scripture reading this morning for the third Sunday of Advent is found in the Gospel according to Luke. It is found in the first chapter, and I'll be reading verses 26 through 45. Listen for the word of God for you this day, for God is still speaking. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But Mary was much perplexed by these words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and be called the Son of God Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be? I am a virgin. The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will envelop you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. The angel departed from her. Then Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be fulfillment of what is spoken to her by the Lord. Here ends our reading. The word of God for the people of God.
few years ago, I attended the Festival of Homiletics. Now, homiletics is just a fancy church word for preaching. Um, so it was a festival of preachers for preachers on preaching. And it was in my hometown of San Antonio. So I really wanted to go because I hadn't been home in a really long time. And one of the panels that I attended while being at the Festival of Homiletics was led by my friend, the Reverend Amy Butler, who is currently the senior minister at the Community Church in Honolulu, Hawaii. Yeah, she's got a tough call. <laughs> but she had a really tough call before that because she was the senior minister of the historic Riverside Church in Harlem, New York City. And trust me, Riverside is no piece of cake, so she deserves to be on the beach in Hawaii for a while. And Reverend Butler shared a story that really stuck with me. It's a story about the time that she was mansplained to. Now, if you don't know what mansplaining is, let me explain it to you. According to the Urban Dictionary, mansplaining is to comment on or explain something to a woman in a condescending, overconfident, and often inaccurate or oversimplified manner. <laughs> and looking out among the faces of the women here, I can see that you've never experienced this any time in your life, right? <sighs> Reverend Butler shared a story about being in a group of trusted colleagues, all of them ministers. It was a mixed gendered group of reverends and they were talking shop. And at the time the story took place, Reverend Butler was with child and she was kvetching to her colleagues that she never knew how pregnancy could cause such swelling in her feet and pain in her knee joints. She'd never experienced so much pain as while she was pregnant. And she lamented how this suffering was affecting her ability to sleep, which was then affecting her ability to do her job. And she was just miserable all the time. And her colleagues were so empathetic to her and they showered Amy with just the right amount of pathos for her plight. That is to say all of her colleagues except one who happened to be a dude. And this dude began to mansplain what being pregnant was to a pregnant woman. <laughs> Launching into a diatribe with the words, and I quote, it can't be that bad. You must be exaggerating. This from an unordained minister, not a trained physician or OBGYN, but a man who spent years in seminary learning how to exegete the book of Romans. Not years in medical school learning how to deliver childs. And this man went on to tell Reverend Amy Butler how her pregnancy couldn't be the cause of her symptoms that she was describing, saying that Reverend Butler, you are wrong. That's not what's making you miserable. Let me tell you what is going to happen during your pregnancy. Okay. So we don't have enough time to unpack all of that. But needless to say, Reverend Butler added to us and her panel talk at the Festival of Homiletics that from then on out during her pregnancy, she sought mostly the company of other women who had experienced a pregnancy, particularly women who had had a difficult pregnancy so that she could share what she was going through. Because she just wanted to be around someone who got it. And isn't that what we all kind of desire in our lives? What we really want for ourselves, whether it's in our families or in our friend groups or within our church, we want people who get it. We want people who get us for who we are and what we're going through who hear us with open ears and see us with open eyes and receive us with open, with open hearts. That when they see us, they open their door to us, tell us to come on in and to sit down and say to us, tell me all about it. 
without a single hint of preconceived judgment or ego or agenda. And so if you don't hear anything else about the good news this day, hear this about this very simple and profound story that Fritz did an excellent job reading for us this morning. For what Mary was going through at that moment, what she needed right then and there was someone who truly got it. Someone who truly got her. The story that we just heard is actually part of a much larger narrative describing a series of miraculous events that begin with the story of the angel visiting these two men, telling them that there would be this mysterious thing that is about to occur. One of the men, Zachariah, has a wife who is advanced in age, and she would find out that she is to become pregnant after so many years of trying and failing. That's followed very closely to a message that is given to Joseph saying, hey, your fiance is going to become pregnant. And oh yeah, by the way, you're not the baby daddy. (laughs) And then Mary has her meeting with the angel Gabriel. And Gabriel has this very strange and very unlikely message informing Mary of a very miraculous and mysterious birth that is going to happen with her. The scriptures say Gabriel approached Mary and said, greetings favored one, the Lord is with you. You're going to conceive a son and he is gonna be so great, so great that they'll call him the son of God. And the Lord will give him the throne of his ancestor David and he will reign with peace over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom of peace will come to no end. The Holy Spirit, Mary, is going to come on you and and, and the power of the Most High is going to envelop you. Therefore, the child to be born will be a holy child and they will call him the Son of God. Now, full disclosure and transparency, my friends. I am not a parent. And I have never been visited by the angel Gabriel at night. And I don't want to mansplain this to you. But doesn't that sound kind of dope? To have a child of God that's going to be royals? All right, I'm wrong. In her book, Misconception, Truth Lies and the Unexpected on the Journey to Motherhood, Dr. Naomi Wolf describes the paradoxical nature of motherhood particularly the impact on first-time mothers. She suggests that in pregnancy, a woman is in the grip of the most primal, joyful, lonely, sensual, psychologically challenging, and physically painful experiences she can face. She's often overwhelmed by messages that are unrealistically present, who she's supposed to be and mystified by what's happening to her. And in these moments, Dr. Wolf explains women may need to connect with someone with experiential knowledge, not just theoretical knowledge. Vis-a-vis, Mary needed Elizabeth. Because when strange happened to Mary, she needed to connect with someone who could empathize with her, someone who knew what she was feeling. She needed someone who would not judge her for her, what she admitted was a complex, conflicted thoughts and feelings going on inside of her. She needed someone who had the experiential, not just theoretical knowledge. Mary needed to be in front of someone who could understand the severe bodily changes that were happening to her and the chemical reactions that were firing inside of her. In addition to all the stuff around the pregnancy, Mary was also the town gossip. People were talking, accusing, spreading rumors, adding stress upon these stressors, and Mary needed someone who could understand. So she turns to her fiance, Joseph, because like many of us, when we are going through it, we turn to a life partner or a spouse or a significant other with our crisis. And so she turned to Joseph, hoping that he will help her carry the load. 
Mary instinctively turned to her betrothed and Joseph was so understanding. And by understanding, I mean he decided to quietly and gently call the engagement off. So yeah, Mary needed to turn to someone else because now the stressor of potentially of, of, of her engagement coming to an end was now loaded on top of all of the other stress that she's carrying around this miraculous birth of the Son of God. And oh yeah, just a reminder to all of you, Mary is probably 13, 14, 15 years old. She's the same age as an American high school sophomore. So let that sink in for a moment. Enter Elizabeth, who is also pregnant with child for the very first time and who is also facing a fair bit of public ridicule. The source of Elizabeth's social scandal was her age. She was getting the whole, um, isn't she a little old to have a baby scuttlebutt? So Mary and Elizabeth were in need together of some safe space of unconditional acceptance. What they needed right then and there was what we often seek in God and Christ and each other. They needed a friend. They needed a friend who got it and got each other. It's here that I turn to the absolutely fabulous Catholic pastor, Henry Nguyen, who reminds us that in times of loss and pain and confusion, those who mean the most to us are those who instead of giving us advice, solutions, cures, have chosen rather to share in our pain and touch our wounds with a gentle and tender hand. The friend who can be silent with us in a moment of despair or confusion, who can stay with us in our hour of grief and bereavement, who can tolerate not knowing, not curing, not healing, and face with us the reality of our powerlessness that's the friend who cares for us. So perhaps that's why the angel Gabriel gave Mary a clue about her cousin's pregnancy. The angel Gabriel says to Mary, God is with you, Mary. You will always and forever be in the divine heart. But just in case you need a human heart as well, go see your cousin Elizabeth. God put in Mary's life Elizabeth, for a time such as this. And Mary and her cousin Elizabeth shared the journey of motherhood together. There was no jealousy, no hate, only unconditional acceptance. These women came together sharing gifts of love and acceptance and compassion. I think this is why this event, Mary and Elizabeth coming together, is often referred to as the holy visitation. Now, not all of us can and not all of us will bear children. Not all of us will be visited by the angel Gabriel in the middle of the night. But if you do, please come tell me. I really want to hear. <laughs> but all of us, all of us walk through this life. And there will be times when we feel like we're being carried on angels' wings. Life is so good and easy. And there will be times that we feel like we're being possessed by demons that are legion in number because life is so hard. There will be moments of such clarity and there will be moments when we have no idea what's going on. There will be experiences in which we are so truly ourselves and there will be experiences that we don't even recognize ourselves in the mirror. We will have prides, we will have joys, we will have unfettered loves. With all, and, and, and we will have also those feelings of inadequacy and frailty and shame and anger. There will be times when we feel our destiny is so set plainly before us. And there will be times so tough, so frightening, so confusing that we feel like the fates are conspiring against us. Sometimes we will believe that we can move a mountain simply by prayer alone, part the ocean by simply raising our hand, and there will be times that we are, will be convinced 
that we have been overtaken by mysterious malicious forces that will, sum, that will cause us to submit and fall to the ground. We oscillate between hallelujah, thank you Jesus, and moments of my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Help me Lord, do not be far from me. This is the human condition. This is the human endeavor. But good people, you know what can help us get through the toughest of times and can help us rejoice with glorious praise? Someone who gets it. Someone who gets us. You may not be always able to rejoice in the things that are going on in your life And it can be hard to look out at the world and find joy in it. But we can be joyful and grateful for the people for God puts in our lives that help us make sense of the world. I hope you realize that God never promised Mary, Elizabeth, Joseph, Zachariah, Christ Jesus himself, that life will always be easy, only that it does get better and you are not alone, that God is with us, Emmanuel, always. And the way that God fulfills God's promise to us to always be with us is that God dispatches an Elizabeth to be with us, to provide care and empathy and understanding, compassion, advocacy, solidarity and grace as we walk through this life. And then I, for one, say thanks be to God for those people. For I have witnessed it again and again as women who have had the procedure of a hysterectomy surround another woman who has just gone through the procedure. I've watched as the LGBTQ community embraces someone who has just come out. I've watched as persons who have lost loved ones to suicide envelop those who have just experienced the same tragedy with grace. I've looked on as former immigrants and refugees assist new arrivals to our country and help them navigate the often confusing network of bureaucracy. Each one of these people, each one of these instances is an Elizabeth showering a Mary with empathy and love and grace. And on a personal note, I give great thanks and I rejoice in all the retired and active clergy of Park Church, for you have been an Elizabeth unto me these first 18 months of being the senior minister. But good people, as my sermon comes to an end, allow me to give you one last PS. For there is one more thing I'd like you to have before you leave. As you reflect and rejoice and give thanks to God for an Elizabeth that has been dispatched to you to help you in times such as this and in a time of need, may I also inspire and encourage you to be an Elizabeth for someone else. No matter our gender or gender identity, we can all be an Elizabeth to a Mary. We can take our turn to carry a little joy for someone who is despairing. We can take our turn to make a holy visitation and deliver the gift of compassion and care and dignity to someone who is suffering. It's a holy calling to receive someone with open ears and open eyes and an open heart. Not to judge them, not to explain it to them, but to be dispatched by our holy God to someone in need, someone that we get, just as someone has gotten us. May this be the light of Advent joy that shines in our lives. May it bring some peace and hope to you as well, for it is the good news this day. Amen.
to take a moment to maybe inform some of you for the very first time that our minister of music, the good Reverend Dr. Patrick Coyle, is going to be heading off on sabbatical come the new year. But because next week is Christmas Eve, and the week after that, Patrick won't be here because he'll be on PTO. Uh, <laughs> that's paid time off if you're not familiar. <laughs> and by the time we resume our next church service in 2024 on January 7th, he will already be on sabbatical. So if we didn't take a moment to recognize this time and to bless Patrick on his sabbatical, we would miss an opportunity. Today we pray God's blessing on you, Patrick, as you are about to depart on this sabbatical time of renewal and research, study and prayer. We ask that God would guide you in all that you do and all that you learn and all that you are, and we are, will be eager for you to return and teach us what you learn. We pray that this will be an experience full of spiritual growth on your sabbatical leave. We pray that your studies and your prayers will be fruitful, that you will come back to us refreshed and excited for all the ministry that you have yet to do with us at Park Church. We also hold in our hearts the, the music staff and the choirs, that they might also be renewed in this time as well. And we will pray for a special blessing upon Dr. Dwayne Davis as he assumes the role and responsibilities as interim choir director during this sabbatical. Patrick, I want you to know that we send you off with our blessing. And we will continually hold you in our hearts and lift you in our prayers. We will also pray for Greg. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't supposed to be funny. It really wasn't. It wasn't. But we'll pray for him as well. Then <laughs> right. And this is our covenant. I want everyone to hear this. This is our covenant. We will leave you alone. <laughs> we will not reach out to you. We will, we will solve any problems ourselves. <laughs> and now I want to say to you, leave us alone. <laughs> we will not bug you on your sabbatical leave and we will... <laughs> and we will be okay, but we will be eager and excited for your return, and we will rejoice when that happens. So on behalf of the board of trustees, the board of deacons, and the leadership and congregation of Park Church, here is a very small token of our appreciation and deep love for you. We hope that you'll use it in Whatever way God tells you and the way the Holy Spirit invites you to use on your learning and sabbatical or have some fun. You can use it for some fun too. But now my friends, good people of Park Church, I would invite you to hold Patrick and, and, and Greg and this congregation in your hearts as we go to God in a word of prayer. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us and renew the Reverend Dr. Patrick Coyle as our minister of music through this sabbatical time set aside for reflection, renewal, study, and prayer, the stimulation of, of thought by renewing respite from daily tasks and routines of the last five years since his last sabbatical from the ministry at Park Church. We pray as well for Greg and his family that this will be a blessed time for them as well. And oh God, we pray for Dr. Dwayne Davis as he tends to the role these weeks of sabbatical of being the director of our choirs. Bless him with joy and make it a wondrous time for him here at Park Church. Keep Steve, Phyllis, Kurt, Heidi, and Cheryl, the Park Church staff, the worship committee, the board of deacons, the chancel choir, the Park Meisters, the handbell choir, the chapel choir, and the carol choir and all of us here at Park Church, steadfast in our faith, joyful in our calling, and excited for what God will do through us and through Patrick during this sabbatical time while we are gone from one another. Pour out your blessings upon him and us this day. We pray in your son's holy name and all of God's children said, amen. Patrick, when you begin your sabbatical on the beginning of the new year, we hope it is a blessed time.
and we will eagerly await your return on March 18th. You're welcome. Good people, our worship is coming to a close on this third Sunday of Advent. And I hope that our time together has lifted your hearts and filled your spirits and given you the opportunity to be grateful for the blessings of this day and to give you the opportunity to, to remember and to be mindful of the joy that you have in your life. I also want to encourage you that maybe you could be an Elizabeth to a Mary in your circle and in your community and in your world this coming week. That you could be there for someone who truly needs a shoulder to lean on and an ear to listen and a heart to be empathetic and understanding to. As we have received Elizabeths in our lives, may I encourage you to be an Elizabeth for someone else this week. But now as our worship comes to an end on this third Sunday of Advent, this, this Sunday of joy, let us close by lifting up the words of our common commission so that they may be written on our hearts so that we may live them out as we go out into the world to serve in the name of Christ. Let us now go forth into the world in peace, being of good courage, holding fast to that which is good, rendering to no one evil for evil, strengthening the faint-hearted, supporting the weak, helping the afflicted, honoring all people, loving and serving the Lord, and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. My friends, our worship has come to an end. Go with God. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.